following presentation was recorded live in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania for the 22nd Annual International Association of Square Dance Callers. This is tape number 18, Advanced Techniques of Sight Calling 1. About uh, three or four years ago, I don't remember exactly when, Kip and I did a similar thing that we're doing this morning. And we've had the question, uh, why are we doing it again? Well, there's a couple of reasons. One thing is uh, uh, the world has gone on. We're four, three or four years later. Things have, have moved on a little bit. And secondly, uh, the kind of thing we're doing, there is no right or wrong answer. We're, we're looking for information. We're looking to see what people actually do. In this session this morning, particularly, we're looking just to see what people actually do in resolving squares. And we're talking about people that, that already are well into the site resolution aspect of site calling. We're, <clears throat> we're uh, going to be looking at that sort of thing. We're going to be asking uh, you folks out there to definitely to participate. And again, I, I really want to emphasize no right or wrong answers here. We're looking for what people actually do, what do they see. One of the things you've got to start us on this, where Kip and I were, were several years ago thinking about, is there any kind of an underlying theory behind uh, the idea of resolution? And we were playing with some ideas and uh, decided there might be, but uh, uh, part of that, part of the, the real answer was uh, related to whether or not uh, people actually did different things, or was there really in actual fact just one kind of thing that people did or one or two uh, and thus the idea that although there might be a theory it might be very academic and it turned out that that was probably the case even though there might be uh, a thing that you call a theory and how uh, how people proceed to uh, move a square and and reduce it down to some point that that's uh, that's very standard uh, and you could do it ver various different ways you could, you could look at various techniques like sequence of men and odd even and parity and various things like that. You could do all those, but what did people actually do? And uh, we suspected what the answer was, and, uh, but we thought we'd run a little workshop here at Color Lab to find out. Because we, we had people from all around the country, and we didn't do, did do that. We're going to do a, that again this morning. We're going to do that same thing this morning, and we're going to ask you to help us out and participate. And remember, remembering again, there's not going to be any wrong answers here. There's just, there's just, this is what, what you do. One of the things we're going to ask you to do, oh, and then in follow-up of that, this afternoon, we're going to build on what we found out this morning and, and what, we, what we already know. We're going to build on that and, and offer you uh, suggestions of, of things you might do to uh, uh, expand your own capabilities and uh, take it sort of what might be, for some of you at least, the next step. And so what we're going to do this morning, though, is uh, it's just a little uh, workshop kind of thing for all of us. A little workshop kind of thing for all of us. And uh, we'll start out. Well, we're going to do some dancing. In fact, we're going to do a lot of dancing. And we're going to ask some square, uh, square to get up here and then, then each anybody that wants to, to help us out and participate. And we'll lead off by showing you what we have in mind. So that's what we're going to do this morning. And uh, Kip, do you have anything you want to? Uh, oh, yeah. Oh yeah. Okay, the, the sheet that you have in front of you. Is it the same thing on both sides? No. No. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Which side do we use? Let's use the edge. Let's start with the edge, okay? The, the sheet that we have that you have in front of you is a, uh, a series of pictograms of setups that that we feel, Bill and I. Uh, are the most common places where site callers see a, an exit door, if you will. All right, the visual trigger that says, okay, I'm going for a resolution, what do I have down there? Let's, I'll move them a little bit more. Aha, I recognize that. All right? These are very common, as you can see, they're all pretty much standard arrangements of the box formation and standard arrangements of the line formation. And, and the partner pairings that you see, for instance, in the lines are the ones that maybe some of you are, are very familiar with. Like, for instance, you might be able to recognize a standard line all the time with partners paired. All right, that'd be the first one. And the second one, the second one is the exact same type of setup, but they're out of sequence. Everybody's out of sequence. And the third one is your first mixed pairing situation, all right, where, you, where half of the line is paired and the other half is unpaired. All right. 
Now, we, what we don't know is we don't know what everybody sees. But we do know that everybody sees it different. That's for sure. And we especially know that, that we all describe it differently. Now, how many of you have got, like, a real cute get-out for anything? Some favorite little get-out that's right now on the top of your head. Come on, somebody. Anybody. All right, Bill. Just give us your favorite get-out. Where does it come from? Which Set it up for us. Which setup do you want? Well, well, just give us your favorite, one, one of your favorite get-outs and tell us what the setup is. Well, from standard lines. Standard lines. Wait a minute, wait a minute. So who's, who's got who for a partner? Uh, everyone has the same partner. Okay, are they in sequence? They're in sequence. Okay, so it would be like the number one, the first pictogram, right? Cut the quarters, all the boys shake left hands, full by. Girls fold in front of the boys, go right left frame. Ooh. Up, hey, let me write that down. <laughs> write that down. <laughs> It's not, this, this session is not being taped, guys. This is kind of a... <laughs> so get your pens out. <laughs> this, is, this is truly an informal session that we're doing here where we can trade ideas like these. these yeah, that's, what, that's exactly what I'm looking for. Now, you see the, the problem that we had right away in communication. We had a problem in communication because I didn't know what you meant by standard line. You knew what you meant. And I, I could assume what you meant, but I wasn't positively sure what you meant by standard line. And, and that's what Bill and I are here to look for today. All right, now, you would, would you see that standard line coming up in real time and say, okay, this is a good place for me to apply that great little touch of quarter get out? Will you see it coming as a site caller? Yeah, a lot of us can see the standard line coming, and, and uh, that is the, the partner paired line in sequence, okay? But are there other formations that we also see? We're sure, we are absolutely sure that there are. What we want to know is, are there some formations that, like, everybody sees? Is there a consensus among all of us as to which are the more common setups that we apply our get-outs to? Or do some of us use the technique of traveling to a point? You recognize where you're at and say, oh, I've got this clever get-out. What do I need to get them to in order to apply this get-out? And then can you move the dancers to that particular point well, what we need to know is what's in your head when you're calling. Well, this is going to be a real-time experiment now. I hope we're all going to benefit from it. That's why I say take your pens out. That's why there's an awful lot of white space next to these pictograms. So, <laughs> and I've got also another handout up here that has uh, a set of uh, pictograms that have no direction on them. Uh, in other words, they got no little pointer. And it happens to be... A, uh, an arrangement of, uh, well, it could be any kind of arrangement, basically, depending on which formation you, you want to say. Uh, and it would be very nice to take that particular formation, for instance, and see if we can apply it here and, uh, and put directions on the pictograms and see if these are some spots that we recognize. Now, you don't have that yet. I'm going to hand, Wayne's going to help me one more time hand this one out. All right. And we're going to get up there and do this. Now, Again, there's no right or wrong. What, what Bill and I are trying to do here is to get this down on paper, is to find out what it is the site call is a scene. We really don't know. We can guess, but we just don't know. So we're going to do it. You want to play? I say, do you want to play? Yeah. All right. <laughs> we're thinking about it. All right, so, so like <clears throat> Bill and I are going to, to do some, a couple of little routines now to get you an idea of what we're looking for. And we need you to be open and honest and, and don't, be, don't worry about whether or not you see anything or don't see anything. We're not going to em embarrass anybody here. That's not the point. The point here is to try to find out what you as a psych caller is, are mentally seeing while you're calling, especially when it comes to that trigger point where you say, I want to resolve. What is it that you recognize about the setup of the square that says to you or causes you to say, ah, great, get out here. All right? We want to know what that point is. Okay? Well, yeah, we need a square. If we can get a square, say, up here on, on my right, your left, and uh, right over here, why don't you get on one side of that center cord so that you're not uh, uh, playing around with that? Uh, 
All right. Yeah, I got I got the Eureka right here. <laughs> yeah, we're we're gonna keep this same square for quite a while so that you guys can can. Uh, yeah, yeah. Now's the time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, he out of the park in the corner, two heads, square through, go four. Size to do a half sachet. Everybody swing through here. Single hinges, girls trade and spin the top. Single hinge here, column circular. Everybody trade, roll the face. Pass through, you're gonna wheel and deal and spread. Touch one quarter. Column, circulate one spot. Everybody trade, roll the face. Now pass through. Now, at this point, we might we might say to you guys, okay, we're going to uh, we're gonna ask you now to resolve the square. And we, we don't care what you do to do this, and there's no right or wrong answer. We say, at this point, we've set them up uh, and uh, and we're going to ask you to now resolve the square. So I'm asking me, I'm going to resolve the square. I, don't, I did a bunch of things, and I haven't been, I haven't been keeping track of anybody, and, and uh, I don't know what the score is or anything like that, so, so I'm just going to take it from here and, uh, and see what happens next. Okay, everybody tag the line, please. Face to the right, and the couple circulate one notch, and you bend this line. Now, I'm ready to resolve. It turns out I glanced out there, and I saw that everybody had their opposites. Now, I don't know whether they're in sequence or out of sequence, but I know they've all got their opposites, so I'm going to say this. Square through, gang. Four hands. Trade by. Now I'm ready to do it. And, uh, and, and everybody is, is very close here. We've got, we've got a situation that's... Uh, uh, if, if you see, what I see here is the inside people are paired, the outsides are not, and everyone's looking at their corners. You see that? All right, swing through. Boy, run around the girl, do a half tag, do a half a trade, do a half a circulate, and a right or left grab. But wasn't that it? Meet your girl, promenade. And he gets back home. So th that was the, the situation that I just happened to luck out. I had two paired, two not paired, and I was an eight chain through, and I happened to have a get out right for that particular one. And uh, next time this might come out different. Kip, we're going to try one for Kip. And I, I, and, uh, and, and it's, you know, it's obviously going to come out different. Now, this time, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to set him up a little bit. Kip, why don't you just turn around? I'm going to set him up, and he's not going to know where we are. And then I'm going to give him the microphone. Hold it. Yeah. They were on the opposite side. The, the, the partners were on the opposite side of the set from them. And I knew that... I just happened to see that, and so I said I knew a square through four hands would bring him over there. That, that was that was what I saw. Well, All right, we, we can do the same kind of thing. Size, square through four. Heads, smile. Yeah, why don't you do that? Single circle, three quarters make a wave, center straight. Swing through when I get there. Single hinge and fan the top. Do a linear cycle right here. Be careful now. Touch one quarter. Uh, I, I'm already in trouble, aren't I? <laughs> uh, it, it, uh, these guys, this side of the set, happen to do it correctly. Uh, thank you. Uh, what do I know? I, 
<laughs> let's 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 hope for Kip's sake that they're symmetric, huh? <laughs> oh well, that's the way that goes. All right, I, I think I think they are symmetric, gang. Does everybody agree? All right, where was I? Swing through, gang. All right, Kip, you take him here, and, and he's. Gonna... Okay, uh, in real time, as soon as I look at the square, I'm, I'm looking at this wave. It just so happens they wanted to look at this wave. And I'm looking for a possible pairing in that wave. And I see one. I see one potential pairing in that wave. So if I don't have one pairing in that wave, i got to have another pairing in the other wave, one potential pairing. And furthermore, if I do a hinge, it shouldn't really change things. Do a hinge. Okay, now my waves have changed, but do I have pairings anywhere? Yeah. Okay, so... So, uh, unhinge. <laughs> unhinge. Unhinge. Now, the, the fact of the matter is, I don't recognize this particular setup as something where I can apply one of my canned get-outs to. I just don't recognize it. So I'm going to have to move the dancers. All right? This is not truly a visual trigger for me. Even though I recognize where I am, it's not a trigger. It doesn't tell me anything at this point. Okay? So I'm immediately going to go to something that's, that's more normal if I possibly can. So let's do a split circulate and boys run. Now I didn't particularly care about pairings when I was headed that way. All right, when I would do the split circulate, the boys run, I was just going for no normalcy. But now I'm gonna do another visual check at this point and I see this is even better than what I had before. Because I've got pairings in each line. I mean, I've got immediate pairings with a girl's trade. All right, I think. All right, go ahead, girl's trade. Now I got one in and one out, do we agree? Okay, so where, where, where do I go from there? Any one of 17,957,423 canned box get-outs, all right, that we have, or even, or, or even some line ones, that's right. For instance, AC Ducey. Okay, do you recognize this? I see some heads going up and down. Okay, let's talk about what we see, because that's the critical aspect here is being able to verbalize or vocalize or communicate what we see. I saw a head going up and down over here. What do you see when you see this? Yes. Yes. Original opposites, okay? And this was the, uh, this is different from the opposites that Bill saw a minute ago. <laughs> All right? But, but really, really, not, not much. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, if, you're, if you have them in sequence or out of sequence, it, that's the only real question you have as to which get-out you're going to apply. All right? Anybody have a really great get-out from this, uh, this type of a situation where everybody's paired with opposites? All right, do you have a mediocre one? <laughs> yeah. Don't do it, please. <laughs> Third hand promenade. Okay, that that can happen a lot of times. Uh, especially, it's a nice recovery from an error, from an error, from an error, from a mistake. <laughs> okay, when you get the sequence screwed up on a regular part of pairing, sometimes you end up with opposites, and you can all of a sudden say, "On the third hand promenade." What about another one? Anybody? Yeah, down back. Okay, never thought of that. That's good. Write that down, Bill. <laughs> Tom? Boys do turn back. Girls, girls circulate, boys circulate, roll down the lane. Turn the bottom left. Yeah, 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 that's nice. You want to see that one? Uh, girls turn back. No, I'm sorry. Girls, boys turn back. Girls circulate twice. Once, fellas. Girls, girls circulate once, I'm sorry. I think that was it, right? Boys circulate. Courtesy turn. The square you set for me. You're almost home. Okay, you have the heads lead right, veer left. Boys circulate twice. Couples trade. 
<laughs> is this the same setup as we had before? What's different about it? Yeah, you got different leaders and different trailers. It, it makes a lot of difference in the application of your get out. All right? It, it could make a lot of difference in the application of your get out. Especially if you go to a mixed pairing situation, right? Uh, let's have uh, everybody bend the line. All right, unbend the line for me. I'll do it a little quicker here. Do an AC Ducey. Now, this is really different from couple circulate, please. This. Really different. Do we agree with that? I mean, as far as applying get outs and so on. Really, really different. Okay. So that's what we're trying to see here, guys, and we need to know what, what it is you see as we arrive. Now, uh, bend the line, pass the ocean, split circulate, and explode the wave. All right, now at this point, we might pass you the mic and say, take it from here and let us know when you get to something that you truly recognize where you can say, I'm now going to apply a get out. Okay? Anybody want to just try it from here? Tom, you had your turn. Let's get a new voice out there. We've got dozens of faces looking at us here. Somebody say something. Somebody stand up. Just stand up and volunteer to take the square from here. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Ends cross fold. Do you recognize what you have at this point? Could you tell us? Could you tell us? Yes, I have two couples mad and the others miss mad. Okay, now you say you have two couples matched. Are you looking at the girl that the boy is standing beside or the girl the boy is looking at? Looking at. All right. Looking at, yeah. Okay, so you have a reference matching. Right, right. Okay. All right. And then what do you want to do? You just want to apply some get out from here? Start through to the right and left through. Uh, when I saw the when I saw the match couple coming to the inside, and you know their corners behind. So you actually had called the star through in the past in the wheel and deal before you thought that the Dixie Grand was where you were headed. Yeah, you had, so you had the dancers in motion, and then... Yeah, that's, that's great. That's exactly, yeah. that's exactly what I was doing in that case. That, 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 but that doesn't make it great, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> no, but... <laughs> this, yeah. Yeah. But, but it, it is great because, you see, you're telling us something that we, we seem to know, but we need proof of this. That's why we're here. We need to know... Did you think about that Dixie Grand before you called the star through, even before you called the cross fold? No. How, see, how many moves out on the chessboard were you? While they were, doing the wheel. While they were doing the wheel and deal, and then you just saw the Dixie Grand begin to develop. I mean, that was, that's what you saw. Okay. All right. Who wants to come up and do it? You can, you can do it from, from your place if you want. All right. You call. Oh. Okay, how about somebody over here? Come on, guys. This is calling. I think you're familiar with this. Come on up, yeah. This is Tom. Say good morning, Tom. Uh, I'm not too fast. I was in the hospital three weeks ago on my back for eight days, so... This is back to starting over again. I'm a new caller. <laughs> That's right. Always was. Actually, I used to be a fast caller. Then Earl Johnson told me to slow down, and then ever since then, I listened to him. So now I've been a half-fast caller ever since. Head star through. Spread. Pass through. Wheel and deal. So what do you want me to do? Double face. Okay.
Okay. Whenever you want me to. Pass through, trade by. Star through. Couple circulate. Ferris wheel. Zoom. Touch quarter. Split circulate twice. Trade and roll. Pass in. Oh, I'm sorry. And you ought to be. Okay. Okay, now what we need to know is uh, when we said, okay, resolve, did you see what you, what you had? Probably not. All square the circle. Mm -hmm. Any formation I can put out there, except the rear one, the harder, I see everybody on the circle. I see the girls on this circle, the boys on this. And at any time, I can look out there and see if the boys are in sequence or the girls are in sequence, for instance. No, uh, yeah, but did, did you check sequence in that case? Uh, not so later. I look for partner pairings. Partner pairings first, and then, and then the sequence. And this is what we found out in our experiment a few years ago. That, that the largest majority go for a pairing, a pair, a, a pairing, because that tells you a whole lot. If I can get one pairing, and that's what you did too, all right. As soon as you move the girls over there, you you recognize that you had at least one pairing, and then you ascertain that you did not have the other one. If I don't have any pairings, then I have to do a lady's chain of command to try to create one. Okay. Circulate anything that gives me a lady's chain. All right. Thank you, Tom. Uh, let's have the heads. Uh, lead left and veer right. Okay. Next volunteer. <laughs> Anybody want to volunteer? Yeah, come on up. We're just going to, I'm going to move these dancers into a, a lesser known type of formation or a less common formation. Okay. And, uh, and this is not to trick you or anything, but it's just that we can analyze what it is that you see when they get there. All right? All right. Uh, Ferris wheel. Veer right. Four boys pass through. Send a wave. Swing through. Boy first. Boy first. Good. Everybody with a left hand do a trade and roll. I'm looking for waves of three in the center. Ocean waves of three. All right? Now, at, at some point in our calling career, <laughs> some point in our calling career, we'll be up there and someone will pass us a mic, you know, a hot, on a hot mic session and say, take it, Frank, it's yours. And, uh, and this, this can look cumbersome, but really it's not. Really, this is not cumbersome at all. And the, and the question is, the question is, how would you handle this situation? This is not exactly the problem I came up here to talk about, but uh, <laughs> uh, all the boys are facing a girl. Everybody star through. Okay, now it's at least a at least a formation that I can deal with. Um, center, the to make it simple, center uh, dancers do a wheel and deal. Um, <clears throat> I. Uh, Maybe everybody feels this way, but I I do a very uh, approach to sight calling that probably is very different than what everybody else does, and I, I guess that's what you're here to, to hear about. And that is, uh, there's a couple of, uh, the basic idea that I use is if I connect my two key couples, if I draw a line between the man and his partner, thing is I think the brain can recognize colors and formations well, so if I connect like the number one man to his partner and the number four man to his partner, those two lines will give me a geometry, and I know by the geometry of those lines tells me a lot of clues as to how to get out. Okay, hang on. I need time to analyze that. Okay. It's very closely related to your number of couples in the same half square. It's related to that. Or number. In, in relation yeah. to square, I would take, for instance, the inside man. I'm drawing a line. This is diagonally to the outside lady. Is that what you mean? 
Well, the... Yeah. Here's, the one, here's my number one couple. I draw a line between them. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. My, here's my number four couple here and here. Okay. I draw a line between them. And the, the way that that line looks tells me a lot of information about how to resolve the square. Now, we, I'm distinguishing two ideas that you're talking about. One is, let's say, a recognition point that you just start from, you don't have any clue, and you're saying, I at least know where they are. Distinguish that from your target get-out point, where it says, I know how to do a get-out from here. So I'm talking about that initial recognition point that says, I know where they are. Okay? So the, the um, by by the shape of this line, without looking at anything else, okay, by the shape of this line, I know that this is a, this is a kind of get out where one couple is going to have their partner on the outside. The other couple will not have their partner. Okay? I know from the shape of the geometry I don't, uh, that, that it's, it's what I would call an, an, odd, an odd get out. Now, odd relate, and, and I'm it's hard to do this quickly without explaining lots of background. Odd relates to the concept that you presented that talks about if you cut the square, and another way to get to the same place is if I cut the square in half, Kip presented this a few years ago, if I cut the square in half and count the number of dancers I recognize on either side of the square, that is odd. It's an, what I would call an odd get-out. That is, I know one couple on the outside will have their partner paired. The other will not. So centers California twirl. Okay, slide through. See, now I've got, as a, again, I've got my couple paired right there. And I knew from the, as soon as I took that initial snapshot, I knew what this was, what this was going to look like. Okay, centers, you know, centers pass through. I mean, everybody pass through. Wheel and deal. And the centers wheel around, face the ones behind you. And there it is. But I knew from that first snapshot that it would be this type of Alaman left because of the geometry of the of the call of the setup. Okay, those of you who are relatively new to sight calling, this whole session could be called calling without fear. <laughs> because one of the strongest things. You guys want to rest a minute? We'll give you just a little breather. We'll have you back up in two seconds. Sure. Well, your friends don't speak that way of you. That's all well and good, but the major difference between what you do and what he does is he can explain it. <laughs> but, but seriously, uh, seriously, folks, what we're trying to do here in an effort to develop all this is you need to, you need to really understand this. This is so important. We do not have the written discipline, a codified body of knowledge that we can put in a book form so that generations from now when we're nothing but dust people can pick up a book and learn to sight call. That can't be done yet. I don't know if you're aware of that or not. We're very close to it but we do not have it all yet. And that's the purpose of these type of sessions to try to come to a common language. What you see in your head is so well developed Jim and, and me too quite frankly. It's so well developed we don't have to worry about drawing lines and everything. But with, as soon as you go through the exercise of sitting down and trying to write out what you do when you sight call. So if someone else can read it and understand it, that's really difficult. And, and the other thing is, what's interesting to me is, in spite of the fact that you don't draw a lot of stuff, and you're saying, well, I'm, do I have enough time to do all that? I'm working in real time. He's in the same position. He's working in real time. He doesn't have my time to work on it. Like me. Yeah. Or, yeah. or maybe <laughs> Chancellor, having done things a little bit differently, coming along. Well, so he sees this just as fast as someone sees something else. You know, Earl, Earl, Earl Johnson told me one time that, uh, and I was in his, his college for many, many years ago, and we, we asked Earl to explain 
how he resolved the square. He says, I can't do it. He says, I just see it out, out there. And he said, if I had to go through what you call are going through now, this was 28 years ago. If I had to go through what you call are going through now, I wouldn't have paid up a mile. The, the gentleman over here, and I, I should mention your name, but I don't believe that we've formally met. Hal, Hal Barnes from Maryland. He's he does he does have a visual trigger here and is geometric. I mean, if 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 Hal had another couple of minutes, he would show you that those lines that he's drawing that he's seeing angulate when he's going to an odd type of arrangement and are parallel when he's going to an even type of arrangement. It's very visual. It's very real. And if you sit down with some checkers and or or one of these one of these puppies and start drawing those lines, all of a sudden you'll see it. I mean, it's very real and, and it's, it's real time, too. I mean, it's instant, absolutely instant, if you can visualize those lines. If they're parallel, he's got an even situation. If they angulate in any way, it's odd. Yeah. Um, my name is Doug Holmes from Ontario in Canada. Just to suggest an alternative get out there, if he had just the boys zoom and all swing your partner, he'd have been there, too. Tom Seller from Maryland. Make a note of that, guys. That's good. Uh, any kind of sight calling method, you know, this diagonal stuff is when we're looking out there, we're trying to see somebody that looks like a partner to somebody else. Okay? It doesn't matter how, how you describe it, and there's all different ways to describe. Sometimes we do, we do exactly the same thing in some cases, but we all have different language, and that's what the session's really about. Kip and and is trying to get to some commonality of what we do and describe it. Okay. No matter. Go ahead. Rick. Do we have any new psych calls out there? Some some folks that are just beginning to dabble in psych calling. Okay. That, does this all sound very confusing so far? No. You're making. Have you gotten anything out of this so far? Could you explain to us what it is that you picked up on? <laughs> Besides the fact that a lot of us don't know what we're doing. <laughs> Could you? Would you mind doing that for us? <laughs> that's right, <laughs> because that's what we're here to do, and and the the processes that we follow uh, can be different, but they're never wrong, and they can be they can be as various as seeing geometric lines, counting odd and even, having no structured theory, but boom, as Tom says, just recognizing a pairing and then taking the next step of getting another pairing or getting a sequence correct and, and getting out. All right, so the processes that we're using are really that simple if you wanted to condense them. However, the, the actual process that we use as individuals is going to be significantly different. Now, why is it so different? Well, one reason it's so different is because no one has showed us exactly how to do it. Uh, no one has... When I was learning to psych call, there was there was no real book or anything. There was no way I would go to Jim and I'd say, Jim, this psych calling business, where do I start? What do I do? Jim says, hey, get a pairing, man, <laughs> and you're home free. And I'd go to somebody else and he'd say, you got to recognize a line drawn between these two people and <laughs> make sure it's parallel over here if you want to go here or angular. All right, but the thing is I would get different answers. All right, then we're trying to, to consolidate this at this point. It's about time that we did it. We want to consolidate it and say, even though there are many approaches, these, this approach, if you follow it and learn it, this technique, you can easily learn psych calling. All right, that's what we're trying to do. Uh, I just want to finish my comment. Go ahead, Tom. Yep. Uh, when I first started, I was in the 60s, and I, I guess Les Gautry did psych calling, but I didn't know that. Uh, all I knew about was... It's okay, neither did less. <laughs> <laughs> and so I couldn't, I, I couldn't read, sit there and read it when I first started, and I couldn't memorize, so I invented sight calling for myself. I didn't know it even existed. And, and, and when I, back then, believe it or not, I had six lessons. And so you can imagine how much choreography I'd seen. And uh, I had Les Gocher as an example of lots of interesting things, but I didn't know how to do that. So I had to figure out, okay, how am I going to do this? Well, I knew square through four, I got out to there and I was facing my corner. So that's what I considered my inside. There, if I got my dancers there and danced them back and forth, and I didn't do any ladies' changes and I just ran them back and forth, what some people call chicken plucker or whatever, or some similarity of that, 
drive-through was pretty new at that point, actually. Wheel and deal was a brand new call almost at that point. And so if I left them there and didn't chain them, and I got that person back across the square there, I could do my alley man left. The next thing I had to do was lines, okay? If I led to the right and made lines and I got back, I might have had an idea that that was a zero line. I could have done alley man left. I don't remember that. But I knew that if I went out of sequence, and I could do a cross trail through because I didn't have too many calls to do it. And Tom, Tom I, let me interrupt you just for one minute. Okay. What was the one call when it finally came along that blew all the simple theories out of the water? What was the one call that when it was written and when we started doing it, it, it took all the simple approaches to site calling and put them, up, put them right up on the shelf, well, caused us to agonize over it? Hinge. Well, also, uh, uh, Spin, spin chain through. Started, hinge, started that. Hinge changed, changed the angle 90 degrees and changed the people who were playing with each other. Uh, yeah, well, let me rephrase that. It, was, <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it changed the visual. It caused us to change visually, to, to change our focus from one site uh, geometry to another. That, that's what did it. And if you want to really analyze that, take a look at at uh, in mental imagery take a look at uh, is Don Beck in here no <laughs> uh, take a look at what hinge does to the mental imagery theories all right it's a it's a it, it just really causes them to rewrite the whole theory all right uh, it's a powerful little call and and if we didn't have hinges well, we could all just sight call by using chicka plucker routines that you're talking about the simple you know keep keep the gal with the guy and move them back and forth and and, but we don't have that anymore. Almost every single call that we deal with today has some form of a hinge in it where the geometry is changing 90 degrees very rapidly. Okay, do you want to finish making your point? Yeah, I'm just almost done. Okay, so we had basically lines and boxes. That's what we had with six calls at that point. So I was out there. As long as I did any lady, didn't do any ladies change in the boxes, and once I got out to lines and went out of sequence, I could recognize that if I put the man on the inside facing his corner, and everybody has a partner that I could cross trail through. And that's all I had. I got to those two positions, and that was my limited sight call. I had learned that if you bend the line and they were on the opposite ends at that point, it was always the same thing. That was a much later thing down the road. But the whole point is, what made it change? First of all, we didn't do a lot of things that chained the ladies at that point. As soon as we started chaining the ladies, that was the first thing that started us having to do this harder resolution. The calls didn't do that. Pass through wheel and deal was a biggie. Okay, double pass through, first go left, next go right. Now we could pass through and go on to the next. At that point, we even believed that if we led to the right and were in lines, anytime we passed through and did anything, we were always in lines. Want to wrap it up, Tom? Okay. <laughs> okay, so the, the whole point is that if you don't chain the ladies, and you understand that you're going to be resolving either in boxes or in lines, okay? That's all it really is, okay? Once you understand that, then you can go to the next step. But that's the simplest, simplest idea of, of any site calling for those people that are brand new, okay? I guess we are being taped. <laughs> I retract everything I said about everybody since the starting of the session. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to change? Do you want to change the tape first? I want to buy every copy of this tape. Is that possible? <laughs> Our friends from overseas. Hartmut Niemann, uh, Erlangen, Germany. I started calling about five years ago, and so there were not too many changes in, in the mainstream list and the way we danced since then. So I think uh, skipping cross straight through. What he needed for resolu resolving was about the big biggest thing that happened in the list since then. Um, I think, Kip, you said a very interesting thing. We, are, we do not know what we do. Um, I learned, I think the first formal approach of site resolution, I learned was a friend and enemy concept. So you get them in lines. Once you practice the why, you can get them in lines. You get a left-hand couple with a partner. You find how that works. You just work and work until they get there. And then you have basically four ways. You learn them by heart, you write them down, and you're done. That's what I learned for sight calling first. Did you, did you get that? Did you get that? Seriously, did you get that? Because that is kind of important. That's a nice first step. This is the first out of your cassette. The resolution things and 
I still do not know how I do it now. And if I'm lost, I just go back to the rules I got. So, uh, the other thing is this system with the lines, lines drawn from partner to partner, and what you said, it's cross. It's really interesting, but I don't know whether it worked for me. So I think if five people in the room would, would write a book on how they do it, uh, I hope every caller would find a way that works for him in one of these books, but certainly not in more than two of them. <laughs> because uh, that what works for you probably won't work for me. Maybe it does, but then it doesn't work for anybody else because they just think differently and they work differently. Okay, that's a good point. Uh, uh, Hal Barnes from Maryland. Um, I'd like to point out that what sight calling is really a combination of what we observe and what we already know about the square. And the fact that we follow four people to resolve is only a result of the fact that we know that the square has only been through symmetric choreography. If we extend that idea, like we just talked about up here with recognizing that we had an even or an odd get out, recognizing that instantaneously tells us one more piece of information we know about the square that we've observed and from that point on you no longer need to follow four people to site call you only need to follow three people to site call so part of the choices that the caller has in working out his own tech his or her own technique for site calling is a trade-off between how much I know about the square and how much that I have yet to observe about uh, the square so I have found for myself and I know other people are better than I am but for myself, I cannot follow mentally the positions of four people in the square, but I found that I can follow three people mentally. So when I once observe that the square is either in an even or an odd setup, from that point on I can shut my eyes and resolve the square because I know I can follow three. And so the discovery of that fact, that there's a trade-off between following the number of people and what you know about the square was a very important point for me because it freed me up to do things in my head when a square broke down that I couldn't do before that. I just wanted to point that fact out to those that hadn't, didn't know that. Thanks, Hal. The, uh, the fact of the matter is uh, we are all different, and some of us have the ability to follow dances in our head, and some of us don't. Uh, Red Bates w has a phenomenal, I mean, I, think I, I, I don't know how many dances he follows, but I know he follows a heck of a lot more than I do. He goes into a dead stare. He's totally focused at the center of the, f of the floor when he calls. And, and everything is, is like a movie going on in his head. Uh, though he does some form of sight calling, he is a very proficient mental imagery caller. And that is a skill that I have never personally developed to that degree. And, and that's the point that Hal wants to make that you know this this is all skill development and you can do any part of it that you choose to get the result that you want. Hi, I'm Ron Thompson from St. Leonard, Maryland. Um, <clears throat> Hartman here, I'm just going to echo what he said. Uh, when I first started calling I never got into modules or memory. The uh, <clears throat> guy that I started with told me about get in lines and do the pass through and the wheel and deal and there's three ways that you can resolve from that line with the person on the left. I've been using it now for 10 years, more or less, just like you. When I get in trouble, that's what I go to because it always works. So I just wanted to reinforce that and thank you. It makes me feel better that somebody good knows. <laughs> uses the same method that I do, so I, that's why I stood up here to let everybody else know. We're not all great minds like that, but hey, if it works and the people are having fun, use it. Uh, we're also not here to nail down a particular method and dis uh, discuss which one is better than another. More importantly, we're here to see that there are different methods. Isn't it nice to know that even though you're using a, a line, wheel, and deal technique, that there is another technique that you could develop, you could explore if you wanted to. If you want to truly study it, you could. And in the process of studying another one, we learn a lot that we could apply. Even if we don't adopt or adapt what we're, what we're studying to our technique, we still will learn something else about sight calling in the process. So that's why we're here, so we can recognize that there are various ways of doing this. And, and one is not really better than another. One is only better than another for you. Dot Lowenstein, New Jersey. As a female caller, I found that I couldn't actually key on any particular man. 
But I could pee on a woman without any trouble. Her partner was a given. I knew who that was. All I had to find was her corner, whatever sequence I was in. If I found her corner, the men were automatically in sequence, which was fantastic. So that was, you know, my big light went on. Thank you. Thank you. And this is something else, guys. A lot of us chauvinists always view things in terms of that number one man and his partner and his corner and so on. And I've known a few lady callers who just don't see the men the same way we do, guys. <laughs> you know, they're queuing off that number one lady and her partner and her corner over there, the number two man. And so, uh, is, do you do that at times? It's, it's neat to know that there's a technique there's a technique for that visual approach or also, yeah. Uh, with the popularity of at-home resolutions, what I find myself doing now is dividing the square into quadrants and relating uh, not only what pairings I have, but where they are quadrant-wise relative to home. And, uh, you know, that's why, like, when I did the cross-fold and, and you said, do I recognize where I am? And I said, well, I have a couple matched. And you said, well, you mean a reference couple. Well, that's because of the quadrant of the square <laughs> thought that I do because I'm often thinking about doing at-home resolutions. You know, I don't do them all the time, but I think about doing them when I see them. Can we get a square back up one more time? How did you get into that formation? Which one? <laughs> oh, it was a, uh, it was a left face, two face line. A left face, two face line. Uh, Ferris wheels have the centers veer right. Four boys pass through, center waves swing through. Boys and girls together trade and roll. Everybody with a left hand trade and roll. You want? <laughs> let, do do me a favor here. Have the square do it. Have the heads do a uh, a lead left and veer right. Lead left and veer right. And uh, so we've established the left face, two face line. Ferris wheel. Have the centers veer right. By the way, this is this is a pattern that I use quite regularly at plus dances. Uh, it's very easy to get a floor through this, and it's interesting to them because, you know, for no other reason, the flow is opposite of what they normally do. See, all this flow is counterclockwise. And uh, out our way, a lot of times, you, you see the constant clockwise flow. Recycle, sweep a quarter, veer left. You know. Anyway, have the boys pass through, and then have the uh, center wave swing through. Boys first, then with a girl. Everybody with a left hand, trade and roll. Check for a wave of three. Okay? And uh, you got to give them lots of time to establish that because they'll be doing everything under the book, trying to make something that they're familiar with out of this formation, all right? But at any rate, that's, that's where I get in. That's how I get into it. And there are so many different things you can do from here. It's a very, just a very interesting place to have the dancers. Um, did you guys pair up the same way you were when you started? Oh. <laughs> Rule number one. What's the worst? You can only be half out. Wouldn't be the first time. Oh, terrible. But I... Okay. Uh, have the... Uh, Thank you. I right, have the have the ends do the end part of a load the boat. Go ahead, darling. Go ahead. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. <laughs> now, if, you, if, you'd, if you'd had a line drawn, you could have figured that out. <laughs> Yeah, I understand. I understand. Okay, have the others have the others Dixie style to a way of extend, fan the top, recycle. Thank you very much. I got something I recognize here. I'm I'm kind of putting it all together from the fact that Bill said we got you know three and what was it? Was it two and three? Two and three were the same. Oh, I thought it was one and two. Okay. <laughs> so, so I got them all paired, right? Yeah. 
and and my sequence is is okay at this point. Now uh, we we want someone else to come up and uh, back where we started from and offer us uh, some sort of a combination, bring us back to a point that we recognize. Uh, oh yeah, is, this is where you started, isn't it? You weren't paired this way. Oh, did you say? Did you say two and three. Did you say two and three? Oh, oh, do me a favor and square your sets, will you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Gotta know when to quit. <laughs> Two and three is over here, right? Dude, just stay right where you are, that's all. This is the way we. Isn't this the way you were originally? Oh, well, go ahead, go ahead and switch back originally, and. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> that way. <laughs> okay, let's have the heads pass the ocean. <laughs> yeah, really, really. The heads that have passed the ocean. Now have the boys only extend. And have the girls run around the boys. Okay. Now, this, this, uh, first of all, if you, if you were working the square this way, would you be very concerned about partners at this point? No. No, really, really not. In, in sight calling, we really want to go to something that's more of a normal formation and arrangement before we get concerned with resolution. All right, everybody work to your right, do a half tag and pick up a same sex. Ferris wheel. Now, what, 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 what about this particular type? I'll tell you, do me a favor and rotate your whole square 90 degrees. Uh, clockwise works good. <laughs> Great. Okay, what, what about from here? It, it, would this be a point where anybody would recognize a pairing? A, po a possible pairing, I should say. <laughs> I, just, you looking at it? I'm looking for a head that's going like this, see? Come on over to the microphone and tell us what you see. Would you please? Yeah, I didn't understand that this session was being taped. I thought it was an informal session, but as long as it's being taped, we'll use the microphone. Tell us what you well, see. What I spotted right away was that a pass, center's pass through would bring Jim facing his partner. <laughs> okay, now. Now, while, while they're doing that, I would be checking the other couple in that uh, foursome as they come together to see whether the fellow next to Jim is facing his partner, which he is not. Which he is not. Now, do me yeah. a favor and have the girls back up. Uh, Unpass un through, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now, can you ascertain or can you see the same thing from here? In other words, can you see that if the girls were to pass through, Jim would not only get his partner, but the other man would not get his partner? Okay, how much... How, yeah, how many, how I, many I, think, I think probably as soon as I saw that Jim was facing his partner, the next mental step would be to check the girl next to his partner at that time. And uh, it would be just a question of how long it would take me. I would say pass through, centers pass through. And uh, as they're passing through, I'm checking that other girl. Is it valuable to know uh, to anybody here whether or not... All the girls are facing their partners, or just one of them is facing their partners. Yeah. Well, we know that one is, but is it? Would it be valuable to know that all of them? In other words, we. I know that. If, for instance, I know that if I call a pass through, I'm going to get one man paired. All right. And that that we can see. You saw it right away. Everybody saw it right away. At this stage, I think everyone is familiar with line resolution, the kind that was discussed earlier, and that. As soon as I see this setup, the way my mind would work would be, I'm going to get Jim and his partner together and, and get them to a line. And, and I can see a number of ways I can do it uh, to get them to a line with Jim on the left end. And then all I've got to do is see whether Jim is facing his corner or not. I think, I think we all appreciate that. But the, the, what we're trying to get at here is what do we see here? How much information can we, can we glean out of this particular setup? Uh, where, was your focus on Jim? 
There's four uh, guys there. Why did you pick Jim? Easy to see. <laughs> <laughs> no, when they first squared up, right away I picked, we had couple number three, their clothing is very distinctive. I picked them as my primary couple. And then Jim is the tallest man in the square and his partner is the shortest lady. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and these are all really fine uh, memory hooks. Mm -hmm. uh, now, analyze it from this viewpoint, or follow me if you will. If I have one of those girls face, potentially facing their partner, the other one could be facing her partner or not facing her partner. Isn't that true? All right. But if I do a square through three, have the girls square through three, please. All right, I'm going to get the same net result. It's just going to be flip-flopped, okay? But in the process of doing a square through three, which is a longer call to execute than a pass-through, I have more time to analyze whether that other girl is also going to end up facing her partner, okay? Now, your focus is over here on your two, um, your two key men. This is your, what we call the view aspect that you're using. It's these yeah. two guys. So, so as soon as those girls square through three, uh, I see that Jim does not have his partner. Okay, and as soon as right, Jim, right. if he was looking at her before, but he does not have her now, then the other guy must have his partner. All right, this guy out here, even if I didn't recognize, he must yeah. have his partner. And furthermore, I have one paired situation, I have a mixed pairing situation. I have one potential pairing, and the other one must have opposite lady. So if I wanted to resolve at this point, I would have to go to the generic box resolution. I wouldn't have to, but that would be the most obvious one to go through. All right. Or I would have to effect an AC Ducey of some sort, which would chain two of the girls and leave the other two girls unchained, and then I could use a line type of resolution. Now, that's the way I personally analyze it. As soon as I had the girls in the middle, that's, that's the way I analyze it as to going to the pairing. It gave me more options. That's all. Uh, yeah, go ahead. No, no. Well, yeah, but you, you callers have to learn. You know, I mean, you, it, it just gave me yeah. more time. Well, and suppose suppose I'm not satisfied again. Suppose I don't have the answer. Suppose I just don't have the answer. Suppose the square through three did not allow me enough time to come to a conclusion pass through, go ahead, pass through, trade by. All right, can you see that I'm dealing with the same problem? From the time I had the girls in the middle to when they were square through and three to when they did the pass through trade by, I am mentally dealing with the same problem. All right, the exact same problem. The only thing that's flip-flopped again is which of my two men is now potentially paired. Now it's back to Jim instead of the number three instead of number three man. And I can flip it again if I wanted to. Pass through, go ahead, trade by. Now all of a sudden it's that number three man is potentially paired and Jim is not. Okay, Bill has a word. Uh, let's have the girls do a partner trade. I think this is close to where we were before. This is close to where we were before. And I would probably go along with what the first guy did because the thing I see is that once we move guy there and the, uh, I happen to be looking at Chuck and I see his partners once we move, I'd say girls pass through, touch a quarter, and the boys trade, and the boys run, and now I'm looking, see, and I know that's good flow, girls trade, now I got the pairing that I want, and then I can go from here, whatever, whatever kind of a get out I want, I can either do an AC Ducey, or I can do a, I, I can do the, uh, the two paired and two not paired situation, depending on what I want to do. If I want to return to home, I know I'm going to bend the line right enough to pass through wheel and deal, or something like that. Don't do that, but the, my point was, uh, along with what you were saying, Jeff, I'm thinking very much about that flow. So I'd have those centers pass through, touch a quarter, which I like, have the boys trade, boys run. Now, I, I'm, I'm looking for that pairing now because I know it's right there. I know it's close, but I'm not worried about it. I haven't thought about sequence myself. That's the way I would operate that. I'm not thinking about sequence. I'm just thinking about I see that pairing. I see something that I can do there, and I don't know exactly what it is. And at this point, or at that point, I didn't care. Now I start to worry about exactly what do I want to do. If I want to return to home, I'm going to do one thing. If I want to, if I want to just get out quickly, I'm probably going to Ferris wheel and uh, uh, have the centers do something, and, and, that'll, and that'll get them out quickly. So I've got a lot of options, 
And, and I, I love this two-faced lion because it gives me so many options. It gives me so many options. And, uh, and so I go for that very quickly if I can, when, when I decide to, to resolve. And, I, and I'm not thinking about sequence, and I'm not looking around to see who's, whether they're all going to be paired. I just see I got one, and I probably know subliminally I don't have the other because if, I, if, I, if they did have the other, then I would have I was seen that. But since I didn't, I've, I've got a, a little switch that says it's either a everybody or not everybody, and I'm not worried about. Uh, I, I know that there's somebody, somebody's paired if I do that pass through, and that's all I'm concerned about. So there you go. Bend the line, pass through, wheel and deal. Double pass through. Leaders turn back, pass to the center, center star through, partner trade, and you're all, I think, where we were. Oh, Isn't that right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Who, who's next? Who wants to give it another shot? We, we, we still want, yeah. I have a question. Uh, question. Question. Come to the microphone, please. Bill? Yeah. Come to the microphone. Thank you. I was counting the number of singers, honestly, in the karaoke room. That's why I'm not quite up. <laughs> Bill Peterson from Michigan. I have a question, and uh, I have a comment from the previous lady. Um, I don't necessarily look at the key gentleman either. I look at the best dancer, whether it's a gentleman or a lady. If you've ever called dancers out of town, you're grasping the first tip to find out who are the good couples. You look for shapes, tall, short, colors. All these things you look for until you call for a gay lesbian group and then you have a little bit of a problem. <laughs> or if you call over in Sweden where they change partners continuously. But I just look for the best particular dancer. Sometimes that's a lady, sometimes it's a man. And put them together with another couple. That was my comment. She didn't, there's nothing sexist as far as I'm concerned about square dancing. It's the best, the bottom line. My, my comment was, uh, my question was, is I'm intrigued uh, with the new situation, just what you did, Bill, I'm home. Number one, this is relatively new. I wonder about the evolution of this. When it started, people started switching to this type of calling, and I'd be interested in finding out how many callers in here use that method as opposed to the method of Alum and Left come back and promenade home. Uh, uh, let me give you my comment on why I think okay. part of it happened. Part of it, I think, is a result of the advanced and challenged community doing it because... They don't like to promenade. They didn't. They, they, you, we yeah. found that a lot of them, instead of promenading, they'd back up even. And, and yeah. gee, if they're going to back up, that's, that's such a contrary thing. On the other hand, nobody taught them to do that. So they're telling me something. They're telling me, hey, Davis, get off that cook and make me promenade three quarters around. And so I'm saying, well, all right, I'll just leave you at home a lot of times. I won't, don't want to do it every time because that destroys a lot of my other, what I think might be neat little get outs. So I don't want to do it all the time, but uh, I'll, I'll, I might do it a lot of times. Uh, or I might set them up and do that same thing. Instead of just leaving home, I might do an element left and come back and you are home. Uh, whatever. Does this change any of the resolution process? It has to. Uh, I, I, I think the only thing that changes is that you must then be aware of one of the, one of the fellows said the quadrant situation. Yeah. You must be aware of the quadrant. You must pick that up. But let me say also from my own experience, I've gotten into situations where, just like Kip, I, I got up here and my mind was on something else and I, and I didn't check that corner. But visually in my head, I had seen their home positions. And, I, and, and, I, and you could say, okay, if you've seen their home positions, you, you know uh, who Chuck's corner is. But I didn't. I, I, out in the, in the free-running, free-wheeling situation of eight dancers, I, I, I'd have to stop and think, you know, who Chuck's corner was. But I knew where Chuck's home was. I knew where Stern's home was. And, and so I could put him there. And then I can say, oh, yeah, now I remember who that corner was. But I could put him there because I had a visual picture of where they were. And, and I'm sure there are guys that use that. They use that technique because I see it happen to me. I'd be interested in knowing how many of these people. Take a raise of hands. How many use that type of resolution? Your home and the other type. Back to home. Every how many don't ever use back to home get outs? See, just a very few people, and they're probably going to start picking up on some of that. Yeah. Can, can we get someone up here to, to just? We got a little more time. We'd like to run our experiment one more time. Maybe someone else come. Hey, Mike, how about you? Could you come up and help us out? Well, just what I talked to you about yesterday before you got into some other thing. Yeah. 
we're, we're, we're gonna we're gonna set them up. What, what, okay. Since I came into this late, <laughs> um, uh, what exactly are you, are you looking for? As we're as? looking for what what guys see at various stages and. Uh, and at what point then, after, and after a given situation, are they saying, I'm now in control, I know exactly, or approximately, at least I know my method, and I may know the exact get out, or I may know that I'm heading towards a particular get out. At that point, uh, that's what we want you to see. Well, I think I've learned to recognize, part of it is, is particularly at, at the number of different levels that I do and the frequency I'm seeing some of the same people with the home program, is I'm looking for other situations other than lines and other than ways sure, right. to start to resolve. And I think one of the keys for me is realizing the usage of a number of different formations to cross two dancers across the square. Um, head start through and spread, please. Good. Touch a quarter. Uh, if you look at where Chuck and Jim are at this point, if we do an all eight circulate right in the center of the square, if we do an all eight circulate, I can bring those two guys across the center line of the square. I've changed the context of the box of four. Now everybody split circulate. I can manipulate within the box now and have them crossed in by the other side. But if I need to maneuver two people across the square, I mean, one of the ways that we do it from waves is AC Ducey, two people cross the square. But I can disguise it in a column far better that I'm manipulating dancers for what I want to do than within the context of an ocean wave. If we repeat the same patterns constantly in the course of, of calling, site calling, what happens is the dancers start to pick up that we're no longer in a dance routine, we're in a resolve routine. So I use other formations to maneuver dancers across the square. Boys run right. In the middle, pass through. Everybody step to a wave. Girls, single hinge, and you turn back. The, the, the wave in the center, I can cross girls across it. Girls swing through. And now the formation of four dancers of the diamond has changed structure by two dancers. I've moved two across the square. And there are other calls then at different levels that will do the same aspect, like diamond chain through it, advanced or whatever. It starts to manipulate two dancers across the square, and that means I can start structuring things and changing the foursome. I tend to try to look at all kinds of foursomes as, as resolve groupings. Uh, flip the diamond, please. Fan the top. Uh, tidal waves, grand swing through is another wonderful way of moving people across. Watch Chuck and Jim. They go right across the square, and now they're in another foursome as opposed to the grouping they just started with. But those are the only two people affected. You know, the, the foursome of each wave, the only people that were affected were the two that just went across the square. Right. And so it, when many times in, in trying to resolve, we're trying to line people up with partners, and we only really need to move to to, to line them up with partners. And so we can find other methods than ocean waves or isolating the box in the middle after the wheel and deal and maneuvering those four dancers. It, it starts being less of a pattern that the dancers pick up on and suddenly the, we're disguising everything. Um, Jim brought up the idea about you know seeing at home things. Um, let's see what we got here. Um, Peggy, where are you? Oh, you're over here. <laughs> Everybody fan the top. <laughs> I, I, and I think that's a factor we need to start thinking about, is not everywhere are we in environments where we have stages. We don't have the overview of the dancers anymore. We're on the same floor level where I'm at now. So many times we're, we're teaching the, the two and three square lesson group, and we're getting this view of the dancers and not the overview. And this is much more difficult to cite in, because we can't see the whole square. And it, as a side issue, that's also a problem for dancers of shorter stature in the square is they can't see it either. You know, if you're trying to ask Peggy to spot where she is in the wave, if the gentleman or ladies on either side of her are much taller, she can't tell where she is in that wave. So to expect dancers to be able to identify when they, can't, when they get blocked out, we have the same problem when we're on the same level with them. Uh, but that's a side issue. Um, let's see. Um, swing through. Yeah, AC Ducey. Boo. Oh, we're not allowed plus? Oh, yeah, no, 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 that's... I, I, I didn't know I, which I, level you're, you're limiting yourself to. Um, but the ACDC moved two dancers across the square. Um, and and um, let's see, we're here. Good. Boys run. Um, bend the line. Do a right left through. Yeah, that's what we were before. Yeah. Good. Pass through, wheel and deal. Zoom. Uh, just the new center's partner trade because I wanted to get this box of four back together again. Good. Um, slide through and do a right and left through. One quick way, one of the reasons that I've gone to at home endings is not because uh, the dancers are backing up the promenade or to make it smoother. I go at it because it's a, a resolve that surprises the floor more than the right and left grands and the element lefts. And so when I can disguise it better and make the surprise ending at home, then suddenly I've got, I've got a better response from the floor. 
slide through in the center's row. Home. And the thing is, is because of the angle changes of the slide through and the extra row, they're disoriented to that part point. The at home is not expected and it hits with a dramatic effect as opposed to the, the Ferris wheel and the sweep a quarter and the centers back away. Suddenly that becomes just as much an expected routine as the center square through three to a corner. Here is a situation where the angle changes happen so quickly that suddenly the home appears and it results in a surprise ending. Uh, okay, uh, and this is all great, gang. It wasn't quite our, our focus wasn't quite on how to make it maybe better, but, but the idea was, and you picked up on that in, in your different way to pair them, but the idea was when do you recognize, when do you recognize now I'm in control, I'm ready for a get out, and you said, well, okay, I need to chain the ladies across, I'm going to put them in a column and do that, or, or the boys either one. That's, that was, I guess it's, from, I never reach a pattern where I'm making that decision to go from one to the other. I'm always in that decision making process. Uh-huh. Yeah, and, and we, we appreciate it. Uh, <laughs> The points that you make are, are very well made. The, the object of pairing people is not necessarily one. Yeah, thank you, Mike. And we'll be just within a second. Uh, the object of pairing people. No, you can sit down, please. The, the, no, would you stay up just for one quick second? I'm sorry, Jim. And Chuck? No, no just. We, we're running out of time in this session, but as you can see, there's so much we need to talk about. Uh, we're going to do it again this afternoon. Where are we at the... Uh, the oh, we're downstairs. We're down, Stern, Wheeler. Stern Wheeler, downstairs. And we're going to continue this discussion and also uh, analyze again some of these different types of setups that, that guys recognize. Now, for the sake of the, uh, the people who are not using back-to-home get-outs, okay, I want to set that one up for you again. All right, have the heads pair off, if you will. But any time that you're in this standard B1C or zero box, all right, uh, slide through and do a right and left through. From here, you want to use the slide through center's roll, and you'll be home. All right, that was the setup from that. And uh, from the same, from the same basic setup, I'm going to just change it a little bit here. Everybody sashay. pass through, bend the line, and the ends roll. Okay, and that also brings them home. From, from the same place, basically, but sashayed. So there's a, there's, a, there's a couple of them to, to get you rolling on your back-to-home get-ups. And uh, we're going to uh, hear one more comment, and then we're going to uh, break for our uh, coffee, I guess it is. And uh, in the meantime... We don't need any applause. What we really need is for you guys to come back this afternoon so we can continue this. We, Bill, Bill and I, it's been a healthy discussion. We've enjoyed it, but we, we haven't gotten what we need yet. <laughs> we, need, we need your ideas. We need more of your ideas. A comment. Yeah. Hartmut Niemann, Erlang in Germany. First thing on the return to home get out, I'm, I, I work a little like Bill. I remember home spots, not corners. So for me, the return to home get outs, I get them almost for free because for me it's easier if I remember couple number one it's easier for me to bring them to their home spot than to bring them anywhere and bring the, their corner to them so I bring them home because it's the easiest way and the other thing is is the, the chest, chesting with a time limit we have only a certain amount of time and depending on what my main problem at the moment is I spend more or less time on figuring out who is with whom so when I started resolving this square, I certainly would start with the couple number three because I know their colors, and I would bring them out of my way and work with the rest until they're home. If I know all four couples on the square, I don't have to worry about who is with whom. I can worry about who is where. So it's, it's the time constraint. I, I just have an, an amount of time, and I have to care about body flow too. So I think until my time is over, and then the next call comes, and the best call I've figured out until then, I will do that. Okay, uh, just one last comment on back to home get outs. What, what makes them, what gives them teeth, what makes them work with the dancers is when they are least expected. And in order to, to do some uh, clever back to home type of get outs where the dancers are surprised when they arrive, uh, or at least not seeing it coming, you need to develop a technique where you recognize a lot of different setups rather than 
go and get a pairing, bring that couple to their home position, move the other people around with some Ferris wheels or whatnot, have the center star throw and back away. Because the dancers can see that coming. All right? And so that, you, you might say, well, that doesn't make any difference. But it, it really does. It, it's, uh, it's like you've all told jokes from time to time. How would you like to be standing up telling a joke that everyone has heard? All right? That's, that's the point. Although I'll have to say that, that because of that very situation, uh, I, I've developed a little, a little kind of a gimmick that works right along that. We'll have leaving one couple at home do a Ferris wheel, and then I'll say, guess what? And they'll all say center, sweep a quarter. But every once in a while, I'll set it up and say, guess what? And instead of sweep a quarter, they got to star through. And, and someone will yell, sweep a quarter, and I'll say, no, star through. If it's the same every time, I wouldn't ask you to guess. Uh, that kind of a thing, you know, you can take that that's, that they're familiar with and exploit that too. So you can, you can uh, work both kind of situations, even with the very simple-minded stuff, you can work both kind of things. Uh, at least that's, that's, that's uh, my... When you, come this, when you come this afternoon, would you bring this sheet with you? If you don't have this, we have more up front. And also, you'll be receiving this sheet. The reason you have spaces next to these pictograms is we want you to be able to make some notes as to... Oh. Yeah, we want you to be able to make some notes as to uh, some get-outs or some things that people see, that callers see, uh, to help recognize these, especially the ones that are clearly marked, the setups with the, with the numbers in them and the pointers on them, all right, the lines and the boxes. Okay? Thanks, a lot. Thanks guys. We'll see you this afternoon.